Welcome, welcome. In this video, we're going to cover using UTM parameters with custom campaign URLs to track your campaigns in Google Analytics 4. UTM parameters are great for tracking your digital marketing campaigns. For example, email and social media campaigns so you can capture data around how they're performing, including the number of users, sessions, and conversions. Let's look at the GA data with and without UTM parameters. We're in this traffic acquisition report under the acquisitions collections. And we have the session default channel group as the primary dimension. I added a secondary dimension for session source. So we can see the specific traffic sources for each channel group. And without UTM parameters, we can only see the traffic at a high level. That is, all the traffic from Instagram is grouped accordingly for that specific traffic source. So we can't tell what kind of content the traffic came from. We can't tell what kind of campaigns the traffic came from. But if we add UTM parameters for campaigns, the traffic source, traffic medium, then we can see the specific content. So this is a custom report for campaigns that I added with the primary dimension for a session campaign and then secondary dimension for a session source and medium. So we can see the campaign here you can also name the campaign according to the type of content that you post. But our campaign name is Winter Campaign and the source is from Instagram with the medium for social. So if you go further down here, there's another campaign called Fall Campaign that's also from Instagram and has a medium as social as well. So UTM parameters can help you differentiate where the traffic is coming from, what kind of content you posted, and what kind of campaigns you're running from those specific channels. There's a link in the description for this custom campaign URL builder and tracker that comes with a checklist, a builder where you can easily build multiple campaign URLs and track them in one place. Let's start with our list of common mistakes when using UTM parameters for campaign tracking. And for the first one, I'm not going to go with something easy and obvious like not using UTM parameters at all because we realize how important it is to track each of our campaigns. But Number one will be using the same UTM parameters for each campaign. And what I mean here is if you use, for example, UTM parameters for Instagram, you use the source, the medium, and the same campaign name. So no matter what you're posting on Instagram, you're using those three UTM parameters. If we use the same UTM parameters for any and all campaigns that we run on Instagram with the same campaign name for that UTM parameter, then we won't be able to track, we won't be able to differentiate the performance for each campaign that we run on Instagram. So whether you're running a discount promotion, whether you're running a spring promotion or any campaign if it's using the same UTM parameters they'll be lumped into the same group in Google Analytics reporting if we're using these campaigns if we're running these campaigns on Instagram we want to make sure that we have the appropriate UTM parameters for traffic source whereas Instagram 
campaign medium, that UTM parameter will be social. But when it comes to campaign name, we want to have distinct names for each campaign. So we have one for fall campaign and one for winter campaign. That way we can compare the performance between the various campaigns and we can see what kind of campaigns work well. Mistake number two is using inconsistent naming conventions for your UTM parameters. We're looking at a campaign report with session campaign as the primary dimension and we see here in row three we have fall campaign, two words, first letter is capitalized for each word with a space in between. In row six, we have everything lowercase with an underscore in between. Now, some other variations you might see if there are inconsistent naming conventions. Everything's lowercase as one word or you're using camel case. And this creates a headache because if you want to see the metrics for the one campaign, you'll have to sum up all the metrics and figure out weighted averages. If you want metrics like average engagement time per session. So using the same naming convention will save you a lot of time. And just be aware that Google Analytics is case sensitive. So if you use different cases for the UTM parameter for the same campaign, then it'll show up as another line item. It'll show up as a different campaign similar to this. If you're working with a team, make sure everyone is on the same page. Everyone is aware of best practices or just assign one person to manage and distribute your custom campaign URL links. Third mistake is neglecting to use the appropriate UTM parameters and thereby failing to collect important campaign information. So building off of one of the previous examples, if you're posting you know, a typical daily or weekly post, Maybe you don't need a campaign name for that and you can just run with UTM parameters for source and for medium. So these two parameters would be fine, but if you're running a specific campaign or a specific promotion, then you'll want to include a UTM parameter for your campaign name. Make sure you have that added to your URL. That way you can track the performance for those campaigns. Consider utilizing these other UTM parameters such as campaign term and campaign content that aren't as commonly used as source, medium, and campaign name. Your campaign term might be any paid keywords that you're using or your campaign content might be a landing page a product you're promoting, or a topic that you're promoting for your target audience. So these are UTM parameters that can also collect important information that you might want to track. The fourth mistake is using generic or vague UTM parameters. If you use a generic word such as campaign or promo for the campaign name, you can't tell whether the data is for a winter campaign, a fall campaign, or some other campaign. So make sure you use descriptive and meaningful UTM parameters. That way you can differentiate the data and the results for each campaign. Like we have here in rows 12 and 13, one line for fall campaign and one line for winter campaign with their respective metrics and results. The same goes for the reporting when you grab the data from GA4. In this data table here, there's a line 
row four for winter campaign and row seven for fall campaign. The fifth mistake is using the wrong UTM parameter values. So if we look at this data table here, in rows seven and eight, we have our fall campaign tracking. But we have the secondary dimension that tells us the session source and medium. And if you notice in row eight, the parameters are switched incorrectly. So it should be row seven with the correct UTM parameters where Instagram is a source and social is the medium. So make sure you use the correct values for each UTM parameter, especially for the source and the medium. Not only place them in the correct UTM parameter, but also make sure you're using the correct channel. For example, make sure you're using the social media campaign link for social media only and you're not switching that with the email link. And that leads us to our sixth mistake which is mixing up the UTM parameters for source and medium. As we saw in the previous mistake in our GA reporting, if we look at line 8 where we have the fall campaign and the secondary parameters for source and medium are switched. So social should be the UTM parameter for medium and Instagram should be the UTM parameter for source. And as a reminder, a source is the specific traffic source from which your traffic arrived from. So that would be a specific social media network, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, or a email campaign. And the medium would be the traffic channel. So that's a level up from the specific traffic source. And that would be either email, referral traffic, social, or some organic traffic. Mistake number seven is tagging your custom URLs with more UTM parameters than you need. There are some cases where Google will auto tag your URLs. For example, if you're running ads on Google ads and you've linked your Google ads account to your GA account and enabled auto tagging, then Google will tag URLs accordingly. But if you're running ads, CPC campaigns on other ad platforms, then you'll need to tag your custom URLs, your destination URLs with UTM parameters. There are your referral links where Google will automatically pick up where those that referral traffic is coming from. However, if you're running a specific campaign, then you may want to add a UTM parameter for the campaign name. So for example, if you're running a campaign on muscleandfitness.com as the traffic source, that'll be from referral for the medium and you can include the campaign name in the UTM parameter for the URL. Google will also automatically pick up traffic from search engines. So there's no need to tag URLs with search engines in mind. So you shouldn't attempt to tag any links with organic search traffic or organic keywords. The eighth mistake is sending personal identifiable information or PII in your UTM parameters to Google Analytics. This is absolutely against GA's terms of service and is prohibited. So 
don't send any data or any information that could identify an individual user. So that includes names, email addresses, social security numbers, anything personal that can be used to identify any single user. The ninth mistake is publishing your custom URLs with your UTM parameters too quickly. That is, you don't double check your links. So let's say this is on a website or a web page that we're about to publish. If you see your link here, you can hover over it and in the bottom left corner, you can see the full URL. So make sure all the parameters are correct, but you can also check to make sure that your top level domain or your subdomain works properly. And the way you can do this, if you don't want to skew your campaign results, is to copy the link, paste it in your browser. So for example, let's just say this is our browser here and remove everything after the question mark and go to that link. So that way you can be sure that your custom URL goes to the proper destination. So those are the common mistakes when it comes to using the custom campaign URLs and the URL builders with UTM parameters. There's a link in the description for this custom campaign URL builder and tracker that comes with a checklist, a builder where you can easily build multiple campaign URLs and track them in one place. So if you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and we'll see you in the next episode.